Today, the internet has become a vital tool to survive. And it has, without any doubt, become extremely difficult to imagine a world without it. It is true that, yes, was that we have seen many benefits from the internet. But the question is, how much do we really know about the internet? The depth, the safety, the privacy. Is it a giant battlefield, maybe? Imagine a world that exists beneath the surface of the earth. A world different from the things we see in everyday life. A vast underground that is bigger than anything we have ever imagined or seen before. A place where nobody knows about, and a place where you can remain completely anonymous, where you can do and say as you want. But equally, this world has a dark side. It is also swarming with criminals. Because of the anonymity and privacy, it is a place where people could do illegal trades. Well, this hidden world actually exists. This is a world of internet. This is the abyss of the internet. We're going to discover right now together. The internet consists of so much more than we see on the surface. In fact, the web, as we actually see, it represents only 4% of the network web pages like we know, like Google, YouTube, and so many cute kittens know as a lol cat, or even you porn. But beneath the surface lies the vast digital underground, the deep and dark web. It is a place where people can express opinion freely in this anonymous community, but also a place where drug lords, hackers, terrorists, and other malicious actors can make illegal transactions. The truth is, on the invisible web, you can buy all sorts of drugs that you never even knew existed before. You can buy weapons that you have only, only ever seen in the Jason Bourne's movie. You can even buy as many stolen credit cards as you want for a little of $5 per credit card hey, to pay your weapon. All of this illegal activity can be done behind computer screen in the comfort of your own home, sitting in your sofa. It's so simple. And I have not even begun to talk about the accessibility of child porn or obtaining a hitman to kill your worst enemy. Yes, it is possible. You think this is already a nightmare. This is just the level one of the dark internet. I propose to dive deeper. Let's talk about the wonderful and magical world of the Internet of Things. Wow, looks fancy, huh? It's very simple to define the Internet of Things as a network of physical objects that are connected to the Internet. Uh, the companies who sell this kind of device, you know, they will, they will try to sell you the, the story that, look, this connected watch will change your life. Wow. This is a never-ending flow of more and more connected devices every day. Today's example, your smartphone. Your phone can now track exactly where you are. It can monitor your sleep patterns and how many steps have you made during the day. Your watch can measure the temperature of any room you are in or monitor your heartbeat. It stores all your personal life. It stores your life. Tomorrow, your fridge will be able to share what you are eating. Your TV will share what you are watching, and so on. And imagination of connected devices is the limit. But in fact, we sit on a huge vulnerability. 
because all of these devices are usually unsecured by design. It is a wonderful playground, playground for hackers who would like to play with it. Have you ever imagined somebody spying on you through the webcam of your laptop? If you connect a webcam, just for information, huh, you can wait only six seconds. If you connect a webcam directly to the internet, you can wait only six seconds, and it will start to be infected by malware. Snowden documents, Edward Snowden, proved that governments have industrialized the process and can take snap of your face from your computer through your webcam as soon as it's connected to the web. It has even a nickname. It's called Optic Nerve Program. You can check on Wikipedia if you want. So don't forget to smile the next time you are in front of your webcam. Hello. There is now an unlimited capacity to connect things to the internet, making us more vulnerable to attack. Hacking comes in many forms, and it is done for many reasons. Can you imagine reasons? Money, activism, terrorism, even a low-skilled teenager, malevolent hacker, has the ability to conduct the most disruptive and severe activities that you can have a massive impact. The first example I will, I will give is a cyber attack using the Internet of Things, the so-called connected device, so fancy word right now, as a vector on, of attacks. It is called Mirai attack. Maybe you heard about it. The Mirai is a malware which infects devices like webcam or personal routers. The one you have at home huh? is exactly the same. And turning these devices into zombies. But they are still working as normal. You will notice anything. These zombies, called a botnet, simply await orders to attack a, specified, a specific designated target. And it works. It works very well. And you know what? It even disrupted the internet for 10 hours in North America last October, just some few months ago, making sites like Amazon, Twitter, Facebook, and CNN inaccessible. Essentially, this was an attack using consumer products in order to break the internet. We can easily imagine tomorrow your unsecured connected TV or your unsecured connected fridge attacking the FBI websites, who will be responsible? You or your fridge? In January 2010, the world's first digital weapon was released. It was called Stuxnet. Stuxnet caused physical destruction of an Iranian nuclear power plant. Since these technical capacities have been developed and automated significantly, it can now infect systems throughout the world. Six years later, Stuxnet, automation after automation, it is now possible that any government agency can now literally shut down any critical infrastructure of any country at any time. In the US, for example, it's called Hacienda. The Hacienda program is a scanning service that searches for open ports on all public-facing servers all over the world. This program is used to make intelligence or disrupt an entire country's infrastructure. Most recently, Russians allegedly act the US presidential election. You heard about that, probably. If it's true, this cyber attack would become a huge threat against democratic process. But in response, it has been confirmed that the US has penetrated Russia's electrical grid, having the, this power give a country the capacity to switch off 
the electricity of another country. In December, so January, well, it's the middle of the winter, no? Can you imagine the implication it would have on civilians? Tensions are escalating very quickly. This is the best and the most recent example on how cyber warfare can have a significant impact on real life, life of people, life of civilians. Please, do not have a nervous breakdown. I feel you a little bit stressed. Calm down. We will find a solution together, I hope. So, the internet has a strong capacity to deliver positive, positive results. It has the ability to provide free knowledge, education, and growth to millions of people in the world. Let's take one example and the most beautiful thing in the world, knowledge. In the Middle Ages, it would have taken someone a lifetime to create one encyclopedia. Wikipedia is the equivalent to 17,000 encyclopedias and only took 15 years to create. It represents the largest encyclopedia that has ever been created since the beginning of the humanity. And it is freely accessible. Thousands of people are able to contribute to these articles, and billions of people are able to learn with Wikipedia. And it is all thanks to the web and its wonderful capacity to connect people and devices. The internet has so much power, and it is evolving constantly. It has the ability to do the good, but also to do the bad. In real life, with the, imagine, with the old school method, a criminal may have the ability to plan an attack on a bank and rob money from the bank counter. Well, well come on, this would require a lot of planning and would only affect one bank and only some customers of the bank. And at the end, the guy have a high probability to be caught. However, with the internet, ah, the criminal now have the potential to steal a lot of money and sell thousands of stolen credit cards at the same time online and probably have much lesser chance of getting caught. Asymmetry. Essentially, internet can allow industrialization of knowledge, but it can also industrialize the criminality. Right in front of our eyes, a war is happening. It is a cyber war. It's not even a question, it's a fact. Cyber is now considered as the fifth domain of warfare by NATO, along with land, air, sea, and space. With land, air, sea, and space, this traditional form of war and the rules of engagement have been defined for centuries since people do war real war, and these definitions are widely accepted. But there is no straightforward definition in the cyber world. This is a problem. The lines have been completely blurred, and this is why there is so much disorder. We now need to redefine everything. I'm going to ask you some questions. What is the definition of a stealing on the Internet? What is the definition of property on the Internet? What part of the Internet belongs to which country? How do you define a breach in national sovereignty on the Internet? And maybe the last and most ridiculous question, what is the attack on the Internet? We have to redefine everything. Former definition do not work. This lack of definitions creates tensions between nations, and it is escal escalating quickly. And already, any war on the ground is accompanied by cyber sabotage. Say in the same time, cyber warfare has the ability to create weapons of mass destruction and even destroy nations. Until we define the rules, we cannot move forward for a peaceful resolution of this problem. To be completely clear, the Internet should not be a battlefield with no rules, where only the strongest survive. Einstein said, I don't know with what weapons 
World War III will be, will be fought. But World War IV will be fought with stick and stone. Meaning this war we are seeing right now in front of our eyes could have the power to ultimately destroy the mankind. Like in a real civilized life, people or countries should not have the right to fight back or to act back without any rules of engagement or possibility to have a litigation or try to resolve problems through maybe diplomacy or try to plead its cause to the, you maybe to the United Nations before to start a war. Maybe you can go to the United Nations and talk together. And at the beginning, it's simply a question of definition and wishes. My view is that giving precise definition is the necessary first step towards creating a, most, a more peaceful internet. It will be my conclusion. So instead of watching people build capacities to create cyber war, we must all together take action to build a cyber peace. Thank you very much.